Hello, I'm Andrew, and today I will read the Flora and Ulysses book, chapter 15 to 16, and chapter 15 is the electric chair. Hmm, the electric chair. What is an electric chair? The thing that we can control, like the reclining sofa? No. Let's go into the book and find what it is. To say that the book man do, you know, Rang will be inaccurate. Something can happen to the bell. Its inner working had become twisted, warped, confused, so that instead of emitting a please a ding or pong, the derby now said an angry word of shattering you guessed the wrong answer on the game show kind of buzz through the bugman house. To Flora, the doorbell sounded like the electric chair. Not that she had ever heard an electric chair, but she can read about electric chairs and terrible things can happen to you. That particular installment of the co comic had not contained any advice other than that, that it would be best to avoid getting a place in your life where you might have to face the electric chair and any noises it was capable of making. Flora had found it to be a gradually threatening and not at all useful issues of terrible things. That's your father, said Flora's mother. He rings the doorbell to make me feel guilty. The doorbell buzzed and crackled again. See, said her mother. Flora didn't see. How can one person ringing a doorbell make another person feel guilty? It was ridiculous. But then, just about everything that Flora's mother said or wrote sounded faintly ridiculous to Flora. For example, on feather wings of joy. Since when did joy have feathers wings? Don't just stand there, Flora Bella. Go open the door. Let's him in. He's your father. He's here to see you, not me. The electric chair now of the doorbell sounded through the house again. For the love of Pete, said her mother, what's he doing? Leaning on the thing, go let him in, would you? Flora walked slowly through the dining room and into the living room. She shook her head in amazement. Upstairs in her room, there was a squirrel who could lift a vacuum cleaner over his head with one paw. Upstairs in her room, there was a squirrel who could type. Holy Bakumba, South Florida, things are going to change around here. We're going to be vanquishing villains left and right. She smiled a very large smile. The doorbell gave another outstretched sizzle. Flora was still smiling when she unlocked the door and opened it wide. Chapter 16 Victims of Extended how lucentations. It was not her father at the door. It was Tootie. Tootie Chick Cam! said Flora. Tootie stepped through the door and into the living room. And then she stopped. Her eyes widened. What in the world? she said. Flora didn't bother turning around. She knew what Tootie was looking at. That's the little shepherdess. Said Flora, the guardian of lost sheep and light, or something. She belongs to my mother. Right, said Tootie. She shook her head. Well, never mind about the lamp. She took another, took another step closer to Flora. Where's the squirrel? She whispered. Upstairs, Flora whispered back. I have come to check and see of what I think happened yesterday actually happened, or if I'm the victim of an extended hallucination. <clears throat> Flora looked Tootie in the eye. She said, Unless can you least sees can type. Who can type? The squirrel. He's a superhero. Tootie said, For heaven's sake, what kind of superhero types? It was a good and also slightly disturbing point. How exactly was a typing a squirrel going to find villains and change the world? 
world. Hmm. George! shouted Flora's mother. It's not Pop! Flora shouted back. It is Mrs. Tickham. There was a silence from the kitchen, and then Flora's mother came into the living room with a big, fake adult smile plastered on her face. Mrs. Tickham, she said, what a lovely surprise. What can we do for you? Sudi smiled a big, big, fake adult smile back. Oh, she said, I just came to pay Flora a visit. Who? Flora, says Tootie, your daughter. Really? said Flora's mother. You came to see Flora? I'll be right back, said Flora. She ran out the living room and through the dining room. What a truly extraordinary lamp, she heard Tootie say. Oh, do you like it? said Flora's mother. Ha! said Flora, and then she was out of the dining room and into the kitchen. She ripped the paper out of the typewriter and looked down at the words. They were absolutely not a hallucination. Holy bagumba, said Flora. A large scream echoed through the house. Flora took the paper and shoved it down the front of her pajamas and right back into the living room. Eosilas was sitting on top of Marianne. Or rather, he was typing to sit on top of Marianne. His feet was scrabbling to gain purchase on the little ship. Shepherdess's pink flowered lampshade. He paused into the forts and looked at Flora in an apologetic and hopeful way, and then he returned to wobbling back and forth. Oh my goodness! said Tootie. How did it get in here? shouted Flora's mother. It just came flying down the stairs. Yes, yeah, said Tootie. She gave Flora a meaningful look, flying. It absolutely scared the living daylights out of me and Mrs. Tickham. We screamed. We did, said Tootie. We screamed. There is no, just no end to the excitement. If that squirrel breaks my lamp, I don't know what I'll do. Mary Ann was very precious to me. Mary Ann, said Tootie. I'm just getting off the lamp, okay? Said Flora. She put out a hand. Don't touch it, screamed her mother. It has a disease. The doorbell, as if it was echoing Flora's mother's advice, was this terrible warning buzz. Flora and her mother and Tootie all turned. A small voice called out. The voice said, Great on Tootie? Thank you for listening to Andrew's audio, and please make sure you push the subscribe and the notifications button, please. And I'll be back with the Flora and Ulysses, chapter 17 to 18. Bye-bye!